CEO was selling his or her shares, you'd be saying, there's a problem, I better sell too. So this is the kind of lock-in that you have, and hence companies like Opus Prime existed. So in March, um, you know, effectively Opus Prime went into VA and I lost all of my equity. And that was, I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I basically said that didn't hurt. I mean, it hurt financially, um, but it also hurt emotionally. But I thought, okay, I mean, it, like basically was, I'd take the press for a, about a, a weekend, week and a bit, um, and then I got up one Monday morning and I made a choice that I wasn't gonna let Opus Prime get in the way. So I got up and basically did it. Two weeks later, Prime Media, who was one of our major shareholders, increased their stake in Destra to 44%. And as you may or may not have read in the paper, that was my, basically my time for exit. And that was actually the hardest decision. I mean, I basically had to resign as CEO and you know, it doesn't take a genius to work out when a big corporate takes over a small company you can either resign as CEO or you get kicked out. I mean, I prefer, prefer to actually resign as CEO and, you know, and basically part with it in, a, in an amicable fashion. And after putting in eight years of sweat and tears and, and love into this company, it was all gone. My baby had gone. And, and that was actually, and, and I'm, it actually has taken me months and months to get over that whole prime media experience and, and not to say that they're bad people they're actually good people and in fact I would have, I'd be doing the same thing if I was them I mean who wants an entrepreneurial founder in a company that's run by a corporate I mean how many entrepreneurs here would could actually work for a corporate I mean not many it's like water and water and oil so I was actually at this point in time pretty rock bottom a I'd lost quite a few million dollars and two, I just lost my company that I put every single bit of love into. And, and I left Destro and I went overseas. And an event occurred just after this that just put all of that into perspective. Um, one of my close friends um, was dying of cancer. And I flew across to Hong Kong uh, to be by his side um, and this was on a Friday and I was holding his hand telling him that everything was going to be okay and at that point the angels took him away and it was only only at that point that I realized that Opus Prime Prime Media means nothing to friends and family, to the people around us that we love. And, and that, and that is, is still with me. I mean, as you can maybe see, I mean, it's something that I still get so emotional, but it was sometimes think events occur in life. And, and I had someone ask me, would I go and change anything? And during my last holiday, I, I, I spent a lot of time asking and pondering that specific question, would I actually change anything? And instinctively, of course I would. I wouldn't have my shares with Opus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and I could go on, and, you know, there's a list of about 400 things I wouldn't do. But after really, really asking myself that question, and, and being a couple months later, I believe that everything happens for a reason, and if you ask me now, would I actually want to change anything? The answer is no. Because it's through adversity, hardship, and change that we actually grow the most as individuals. And as I like to say, that the stronger the wind, the stronger the trees. And you know, at, at Destra back then, you know, we'd had gale force winds. <laughs> and, and I'm sure you know, there are many entrepreneurs here that can, that can relate to it. I mean, it, I mean, there's been numerous times where I thought about throwing in the towel. I mean, I didn't quite think about throwing in the towel post-Estra, but it did definitely cross my mind. You know, basically, I, I felt like a bit of a failure. I'd lost all this money. I'd lost my company. 
what the hell was I going to do? But it was that point where my friend was taken away by the angels that I that put everything, everything into perspective. Um, in terms of now, um, you know, I, I spent the last couple of months regrouping. Um, I took the advice of another one of my mentors, Cliff Rosenberg, the ex uh, CEO of Yahoo, and he basically sat me down and said, Dom. Uh, make sure you, you don't make any big decisions in the first three months after leaving your company because you'll find yourself just clutching onto things. And so I spent the last three or four months just thinking about what we're going to do moving forward. And we've just recently um, launched an internet investment company where we focus on investing in internet, internet companies, internet upstarts. Um, and so I'm, I know there's a bunch of entrepreneurs here that I'm, I'm actually speaking to about their businesses. And only, uh, it was only announced last week, the business that I actually originally started, mp3.com.au, I bought back from Desra. <laughs> and so, I'm a big, big believer in karma, and everything happens for a reason, and I've got my little baby back. Um, so, I think, the, you know, I think the moral of the story um, is simply this. Uh, as entrepreneurs, there's gonna be good times, and there's gonna be bad times. And it's not about how many times, how many times you basically get thrown on the ground and kicked, and you get back up and kicked again. That's not the important bit. The important bit is how many times you get yourself back up and do it all over again. That is, in my view, true success. And that is the trait of a successful entrepreneur. Happy to um, take any questions from the floor. What about the MEI? Oh, the MEI, yes, the MEI. Um, I finished, you know, finished high school, went to university for six weeks, dropped out because I just, I hated university because I just wanted to get out there and, and do things. And um, you know, a couple of years later, Adolf Hannick, another one of my mentors, um, suggested a course called the MEI. And I know there's actually quite a number of MEIs here. And this was the best course I've ever done in my entire life, simply because, I mean, I'm a practical kind of guy. Theory bores me to tears. I want to do something and implement it. And what I learned in the MEI, particularly there's one core, one subject called opportunity evaluation. I can't remember if it's a seven or 13 or whatever step process where you can get in there and basically analyze an opportunity. Because as entrepreneurs, we have ideas coming out of our head every single day of our lives. I mean, you go to sleep and you wake up and you've got another idea. So. Just doing one subject will actually provide a screening of how to actually, of, of evaluating this particular idea. I mean, you know, is there a gap in the marketplace? What is the opportunity? What's the exit? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could, I could go on and spend hours talking about it, but I know there's a, a couple of guys here who, um, you know, have, have built a business around MEI and opportunity evaluation. So, you know, they're actually down at the front. Hello. <laughs> Give us a call. Think of us today. Hello. Hello. Sorry, that's okay. Any, any, any more questions? What are you going to uh, do with MP3? What are the plans? Uh, I'm still going through a strategic review. I've, I've only had it for a couple of months. Uh, what's happened, I mean, back in the olden days, the record companies thought MP3 and digital music was the antichrist. And they, I won't say they hated me, but you know, they didn't like me because I represented everything that went against their model. The whole notion of giving artists a fair go and, and basically getting artists to communicate directly to their, their consumers, their listeners, and actually making money out of it as opposed to a dollar a CD. Um, but only in the last six months, the record companies have basically finally, finally embraced MP3 as a de facto standard and you know, um, iTunes and Amazon have now started releasing content in MP3 format. And so the model around MP3 is quite simple. We basically give away music, but we wrap it in advertising because I, I'm a strong believer that more and more content will be given away for free, but will be wrapped in advertising. And particularly if you speak to Gen Ys, and I was just um, speaking to a bunch of Gen Ys at, at Swinburne, you know, 18 to 20 year olds, and I asked how many people in the room actually bought a physical CD in the last 12 months, and no one raised their hand. So if that's the market, and that's where the market's going, you have two options.